it's Brittany at Ingleside Imaginarium and I'm coming to you today to film what will eventually hopefully be a double feature but for now in this specific video is going to be my Stitch Mania wrap-up video. I'm so sorry for the bounciness of this uh, video. Um, I am filming it on a bed. The computer is on a bed and uh, it's kind of the best place for me to film because then I won't interrupt what my parents are doing. They don't have to worry about um, being quiet. And so hopefully I'm going to try and keep myself very still and hopefully things won't bounce around too much. Um, unless that one causes some, some tremors. Um, <laughs> but he looks like he's getting settled down. So, like I mentioned, the purpose of this video is to wrap up my Stitch Mania 2020 experience. And I ended up doing daily vlogs for the first 15 days of May, which is what my Stitch Mania was. And I also did a plans video where I talked about everything I was going to do beforehand. Um, if you watch both of those, this is kind of going to just be a recap of what happened during those days and those vlogs um, and just show you where I ended up. Uh, once again, um, I think most people at this point have experienced Stitch Mania at least this year so they have an idea of what it is, but if on the off chance you haven't, uh, I will tell you and explain what my Stitch Mania means. Um, Stitch Mania is an event that happens every May in the world of cross stitch, uh, the general world of cross stitch, not the magazine or anything. Um, <laughs> And uh, the point is to do something kind of manic or wild, um, whether that means starting a whole bunch of new stuff or committing to one project, or in my case, um, working on 15 different projects for the first 15 days in May. Back in 2015, when the first Stitch Mania was held, I participated, and since then, I've done what is now known as the Blimey Cat Method in some places. I have uh, worked on each piece on its birthday. Now, if I finish a piece and the birthday is now free, I get to, uh, have a new start. So start a new project on that day. Um, so for this video, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each of those 15 days and show you the progress I made. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, May 1st is a project that I started May 1st, 2016. It is this project here, Ingleside Imaginarium's Raptorous Love. It features two raptors making a heart with their tails, and uh, I'm working on a model stitch that for a pattern that was released four years ago. But regardless, um, this is the project I'm working on. I'm going to insert a photo of where I got last year, And here is my progress that I made working on it this year. As you can see, I have a whole dinosaur, which is pretty exciting. Uh, it still needs some backstitching, but as I was working on it, I made sure to backstitch the face because, of course, who doesn't want to backstitch an animal's face in a cross-stitch project because it ends up so cute. Uh, this is stitched on a 28 count MCG textiles even weave in the color natural and it features of course a Jurassic Park needle minder that I got I'm fairly certain from Nifty Needle Nannies and um, yeah I'm really pleased with how this is looking. I need to finish the back stitching on this raptor and then I'll have it half done and then I'll have one more raptor to go. So that was May 1st. May 2nd, it was pretty exciting because it was a new start this year. And that's because the project that I was working on last year... No, don't do that. Nope. Nope. The project I was working on last year was finished last year. Um, no. And that was a... Uh... Sorry, guys. I don't want him to lay on top of all those projects. <laughs> I need those. Um... I, where was I, Rhaegar? Do you know? Do you remember? Were you paying attention? No, he wasn't. Um, 
It was a project uh, that I just called Nido King. It was a stitched version of a sprite from Pokemon, the video game. And the specific Pokemon was Nido King. And here is the finished project of that. So uh, that was exciting because it meant that I got a new start this year and I chose to do a piece called Calico Anthem by cowgirl Kate Paints Aplenty um, or her design name I of the Magpie Designs by Kate or I of the Magpie by Kate and um, here is a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. One of my uh, followers on Instagram or it was on YouTube, somebody kindly showed me that one of the words is misspelled in that. So I will need to message Kate and just make sure she knows, and then also make a change to correct that when I get to the wording. But for now, I am of course working on the cat. And the idea behind doing this piece was to stitch my own calico cat, Danny, and she is a dilute calico. And so I colored it in the pattern, as you can see here, so that it will look like her in the end. And these, kind of at the last minute, I decided I was going to use uh, all silks because I wanted to use silks for her two main colors, the gray and the peach. And these are the ones that I chose. This one is a silks for you um, variety pack that I got, those random packs that you can get. And then this one is a silken colors, a limited edition silken colors. So I feel pretty good about using that on a piece that's going to be my Danny cat. Um, and then I raided some kitted projects that I had for uh, some other silks. And so these are all MPI silks here. And I will be using this for the white, this for her nose and ears, black for the parts of the pattern that I need black, and then uh, one of these two for her eyes. And this is where I got, not terribly far, but there is a cute little kitty cat nose on there. Um, this is a piece of 32 count linen in Wandering Ivy. I believe it's by Silk Weaver. And um, you can see I started at the bottom of the kitty cat's chin and I started working upwards. And so all of these are just the first cross. And I worked upwards until I could do the nose on Danny. And then after that, I called it. Uh, I said, that's fine. But I wanted to have the nose. How could I resist stitching that part? So I'm really excited about this. The silks were just divine to work with. I had a lovely time. And I've been meaning to stitch on this recently. However, I was... Uh, concerned that you guys hadn't seen the progress yet. So now that I've shown you, it means I can get back to work on it. Okay, so May 3rd was exciting, another new start. And that is because I finished one of my previous Stitch Mania projects. It was this one, which is actually a project that I started stitching on May 3rd, 2015. Uh, however, this project is far older than that. Um, this was started by my mother back in the 80s. So I finished it up finally, and it is adorable. I'm so excited to share it with you guys. It is from a um, booklet called Barnyard Quilts by Country Cross Stitch, and the specific pattern is ducks and quilts. There is another version, which is chickens and quilts. I don't know if that's the exact name of it, but it has uh, some quilts in the background and chickens in the foreground, so who knows? There is another piece of this exact same fabric that I found when I found this one, so maybe I'll stitch that one too. But anyway, that one is finished, so that means I got a new start this year. And I'm finally getting to stitch one of Lindy Stitch's patterns, one of Steph's patterns, and the one that I picked was this one. It's called Stocking Stuffers. So here is where I got on stocking stuffers. I have a swan head, just the head. Um, there is this one change in here. I'm going to be using most of the called for threads except for the goose or the swan colors. Um, and one change that I've already made is this 
swan's eye is red instead of uh, one of the teals I think it calls for. And that is because this piece was technically started on the 4th. We had a really bad storm on the 3rd, and I had waited to stitch until the evening, but then uh, we lost power. So since this swan was started on the 4th of May, May the 4th, I decided to give him a red eye and have him be my Sith swan, kind of just in honor of the date that he was started on. So he is now my May 3rd project, but uh, technically he was started on May the 4th. This is a 40 count linen in Pale Aqua by Zweigart that I purchased at Needleworkers Delight when I was at the cross stitch retreat, the floss tube retreat in New Jersey. So I think it's gonna look really nice. I'm excited to get back to this one again too. And since we were just talking about May the 4th, <laughs> that is the next project. Um, this is another repeat project from last year, and in fact, from uh, 2017 was when this one was started. And it is a project by a designer that used to be called Stitch Line, but is now called Stitch Area. Uh, thank you to one of my viewers who found that out and was able to tell me that you can still find these patterns. Um, they are a version of uh, three Star Wars characters as sugar skulls. And I am doing C-3PO first. So this is my C-3PO sugar skull. This is what it will look like when he's finished. And this is where I got last year. And here is where he is at now. You guys, I am finally over halfway done with this piece. Um, if you've been following me, you know this one has given me a heck of a lot of trouble. First with, uh, frogging, miscounting and frogging, and I don't know if it's the dark fabric that did it to me or what, but, um, then this year was not immune. There was some frogging that happened. I had some discolored floss. I'm using B5200 on this 32 count picture, this plus dusk, and, um, there was some discolored floss, so I went ahead and took the opportunity to pull that out and trim it out and uh, restitch the worst parts of it. So I'm feeling much better about this piece. I'm hoping that now that I have half done and I've stitched all of it once that I can reverse it and stitch the rest of it without problems. <laughs> and he will behave from now on. We'll see though. Um, eventually this, this, uh, fabric is wide enough that I'm hoping to do Darth Vader and the Stormtrooper as well. So we'll see. I have so many plans and not enough time, though a little more time now than before. Um, all right, so that was May the 4th. Uh, May the 5th, I have another project from 2015. So this is another oldie. This is a Dimensions Gold Collection Petite called a Napping Kitten. So here is what it will look like when it's finished. Here is where I got last year. And here is the progress that I made this year. So I was able to get, what did I do on here? I believe I got this darkest color finished. Um, there should have been some in this uh, arm here too, but I actually decided that I'm going to pick this arm out next time I work on it and uh, stitch it in shades of white and gray because my roommate's kitten, Goobian, looks a lot like this kitten and he has a white sleeve and then a little white marking on his face and I think it would be very easy to make this look like him. So. That way I can have it either to give to them eventually um, or to keep as memory of the cute little boy that was in my life. Um, here's a bonus picture of the goob. Yeah, I was very pleased to have made that progress and it's gonna be really, I mean, look, like just to get, see those holes fill in is so fun. I think it's gonna be really nice when it's done. May the 6th is another cat. It's another Dimensions kit. It is this one called 
on Warm and Fuzzy Kitten. This is another one from 2015. So as you can see, this is what it will look like when it's finished. And this is what it looked like last year after Stitch Mania. And here is where I got this year. This is another project that I am hoping is going to uh, be out of timeout or it won't give me any trouble any longer. We'll see. I did have to frog uh, this foot here because it was over one stitch too far this way, but you know, compared to what I've had to do in the past, it was not bad. And I think I made some really good progress on it. Still does not quite look like a kitten, but we're getting closer. <laughs> I think when we get the top of his head and especially his eyes and nose and he'll start looking more like a little warm and fuzzy kitten instead of a creepy alien or ghost or demon or something. <laughs> I don't know if it's the dark fabrics that have given me trouble, but yeah, that one has been really hard too. I've had to do a lot of ripping on that one. So now we'll move on to May 7th. Uh, this is a project that was started May 7th, 2018, and luckily it's just right here on the cover of the book. It is called Celestial Dragon by Joan Elliott. I'm stitching it out of this pamphlet uh, or book. I love cross-stitch dragons and unicorns. And that's what it will look like when it's done. This is where I got last year after Stitch Mania. And this is where we're at now. This is being stitched on a 32 count linen in Stardust by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie that my sister picked out for me and gave to me for my birthday. And I think I made some decent progress on this. Um, this is the dragon's haunch right here. This is the bottom of his wing, and this is coming up into his neck. So we're starting to get the shape of a dragon, which is so exciting when you start with limited colors and then you, you see things taking shape. That's one of the magical things about cross stitch, I think, is just each stitch you add, the picture comes to life. Um, so that was my celestial dragon for May 7th, May 8th is prize prize another cat and it is from this book called cats of the world in cross stitch uh, by jane netley mayhew and nikki wheeler and the project i'm working on is one of four seasonal pictures here you can see all four and the one that i'm working on is this one right here for summer and it is the exotic short hair there's a bigger version. Isn't he cute? Um, <clears throat> this one I started on May 8th, 2017. Here is where I was at after last year's Stitch Mania. And here is where we're at this year. I unfortunately did not get to stitch on this one as much as I would have liked. Um, this project has kind of gotten the shaft that way each year I've worked on it. But, you know, slowly but surely we're getting the face of a kitty cat in here. Um, again, once I get to those eyes, I think it'll start looking good. Um, I did uh, just the lightest peach color that's around the eyes and here on the forehead. And if you get up really close there, all of this color here in the muzzle. So... My goal was to try and work towards the eyes, and uh, I did not get there. <laughs> this is a 32 count linen, by the way, in Picture This Plus Pompous. P-A-M-P-A-S. All right, May 9th. This is another oldie from the original Stitch Mania. I started a lot of kits, and then, of course, uh, started getting into patterns that I could purchase and kit up myself. And was maybe a little more interested in stitching and then once I started designing patterns I was like I got to do model stitches for my patterns so a lot of these kits from the original stitch mania are still lingering because I've just moved on to other stuff but it's fun to have them come out and to see them every year May 9th 2015 I started this project it is called be joyful it's by design works it's a kit this is what it will look like when it's finished 
This is where I got last year for Stitch Mania. And here is my progress for this year. I'm very pleased. I was able to finish the second big red flower and then also stitch all of these leaves and this little red bud. I think the colors in this piece are beautiful and are so much nicer than what you see on here. Just the reds are brighter and more joyful, I think. So it's fitting for Be Joyful. Um, that one will be fun to get back to. I have this entire branch to do and of course the words, but you know, it's starting to feel like it might be finished one day. <laughs> May 10th, also exciting, a new start. Those are the most exciting days. Um, <clears throat> I got to do a new start because I finished a project that I started in 2016, and that was this one here. I was in a race to finish this before May uh, because I had too many projects I wanted to start. And um, this is an Ingleside Imaginarium pattern called Give Me Some Sugar. You can see it says that right there. And I think it turned out really cute and adorable. And of course, once I actually focused on it, it was very easy to finish. Um, I just think those little lovebirds on the sugar bowl are cute. So that is Give Me Some Sugar. It is finished and I got a new start. And this project is perhaps not quite so sweet. <laughs> um, I started a project by the witchy stitcher called Wits Thou Like to Live Deliciously. I am calling it the Black Phillip Sampler because it is inspired by the character, the goat, Black Phillip, in the movie The Witch. And um, if you watched my vlog, you'll have seen this already, but on the off chance that you did not watch my vlog, I want to share a guest that came and helped me do a little bit of the stitching on this project. Black Phillip himself came to help me on the project. Just kidding, of course. That was my Halloween costume last year, which is kind of why I wanted to stitch this project is because I have this great costume and now I kind of have this, like, I guess a little soft spot for Black Phillip, which is a little weird. I know. Um, <laughs> but he's a big, handsome black goat, you know? So... Anyhow, uh, this is where I got on my new start for Black Phillip Sampler, which thou like to live deliciously. I got the very top border finished and these two little motifs on either side. Look at this cute needle minder as well. This is a skeleton cat. She sparkles. Um, I got this from Gina at uh, Gina's Unique Boutique. Um, this is a fabric, it's a 28 count linen in strawberry swirl by Under the Sea Fabrics by Leslie. And I think it's gonna look really nice. Um, you can see in this top border here, I am using a variegated red thread for the red and I'm using anchor black for the black. Um, it is, the red is this color here, Hearts on Fire by Carrie's Creation. And I will probably end up fussy cutting to make it look nice because as you can see here, I wanted the middle to be very bright and then to fade into darker on the outside. So I did have to fussy cut that a little to make it look the way I wanted, but there's not a whole lot of red in there. It's a challenge that I am up for. Um, so yeah, that was my new start for May 10th. May 11th is quite the opposite of a new start. It is an old 
project. This is another one of those original kits from 2015. This is another Dimensions kit and more cats. <laughs> uh, this is Ebony and Ivory by Dimensions. I love this pattern. I love that it combines cats with music because those are both um, large loves in my life. Uh, yeah, so here is Ebony and Ivory. That's what it will look like when it's done. Here's where I got after last year's Mania. And, hold on, sorry. Here we go. Here's where we're at now. Um, I went in and finished the white cat. Of course, it still needs backstitch, but I went down here, um, here and down here and filled in those darkest shades. And I started on the black cat. That is a landmark, you guys. Um, it has, this project is five years old and I had only one cat for a long time or even just parts of one cat for a long time. But now there is evidence of the second cat. So that was pretty exciting to get to. Um, just the inside of its ears, but it's a start. <laughs> Let's see, May 12th, another new start. And that's because I finished the project that technically I actually started last year. It was another Pokemon piece this time, the Pokemon Pikachu. And uh, this is what it looked like finished. And of course, since it was finished, that means I got a new start this year. And I chose to start a model stitch for a new pattern that will be released when this model is done. It is the autumn version of my Loretta's Seasons patterns um, featuring a big black shepherd mix named Loretta and what she likes to do in all the seasons. Spring and summer are already released. They are called a dambling and a soaking and uh, they're stitched and released, and this one is called a snuffling. Here is about what it will look like when it's finished. And uh, I say about because this project uses some colors of Weeks Dye Works. But here is where I got to this year. I stayed up really late working on this project because of course I had to finish Loretta. So there is Loretta, a snuffling, but we don't know what yet. This is stitched on a 28 count uh, linen in Haven by Picture This Plus. I think she is so cute. I love her. I still need to uh, do winter as well, but we'll start with autumn. <laughs> Uh, that should be a really easy one to finish for next year's Stitch Mania. That was part of my goal this year with some of my new starts was to pick some things that could be done soon because I think I'm approaching 40 whips after these new starts. Um, not there yet, but I could be getting there soon. And uh, I was like, I need to make sure I can finish some of these in a timely manner. <laughs> we don't need projects hanging around another five years. Although this next one probably very realistically could. Um, this is a my May 13th project that I started last year and it is this pattern here. It's Daenerys by Elka Cross and I love this and I'm actually kind of obsessed with it as you're going to see. So um, this is what she will look like when she's finished. I think it's gorgeous. I think Daenerys looks beautiful. I think the dragons are cool. I love the colors. And uh, this is actually a full coverage piece. It is my only full coverage piece that I um, am stitching on. I have one other, but it's pretty much a UFO. And uh, this one, I actually um, started last year, realized I had made a mistake with my fabric, had to start over. So here is where it was last year. But ignore that because I had to throw that away. Um, I restarted it on 25 count Lugana and had just the tiniest little purple line uh, when I started this year. But here's where I got to after this year's Stitch Mania.
And there is an extra picture in there because I have been working on this every day just about since then uh, because I realize if I'm going to make progress on this and try and finish it, I need to be giving it some attention. And look where I am. I am so excited about this, you guys. Here is um, the dragon Rhaegal. Here is his neck. Isn't that so cool? Um, so his head will start about right here. And quite likely, I'm going to be working pretty hard on this until, um, well, giving it a little attention every day until I have that first dragon done. Because I have to see the dragon, you know? Um, but yeah, I just think that this is turning out so beautifully. I think it looks like a watercolor painting. I love how the colors are blending. Um, I forgot when I restarted this on 25 count that there are a lot of color blends in this, but what I've been doing is stitching the bottom leg with the darker color and the top leg with the lighter color, and I think it's worked out really well. Um, there are some blends, and for example, the, the fins and the gradation from the dark to the light pink is, I think, really good. I think it's really good. Um, the designer did a fantastic job with this pattern. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased with how that's coming along and I'm grateful to Stitch Mania for getting me excited about it again because I had, it couldn't have even been 50 stitches, I don't think. So that's pretty cool. We're almost done two more projects, you guys. May 14th, this is another kit from 2015. It is in the same set as Be Joyful. It is Have Faith by Design Works. this time featuring a quail. And this is what it will look like when it's finished. And here is where I got last year. Oh my goodness, I did iron this, but uh, it got wrinkled. Sorry, you guys. Um, here is where I got after this year's mania. I uh, stitched all of this to the right of the bird. Um, so these little blooms and the outline of all the leaves. And I got to maybe I where I had like one or two of these leaves left. And I realized, you guys, I made a mistake. It started last year when I stitch this leaf. If you recall, when I was talking about Be Joyful, I mentioned that the colors on the model pick seemed darker and a little more drab and dreary than the colors included in the kit. And I just assumed it was the same for this, which as you can see, it is. However, these leaves are supposed to be outlined in the color that they refer to as orange. Here is the thread card. I'm gonna pull this out, ignore this. When you look in this jumble of threads down here, what color do you look at as orange? This one, right? That's what I thought, but no, apparently orange is uh, this color here, which to me is definitely a yellow orange. Um, I stitched it in the wrong color, you guys. I'm okay with it though. I'm definitely not going to rip it out. This project is five years old. I'm not making backwards progress on it. And I actually think that that orange is going to look really nice. The color that I accidentally used was what's called light red. Um, <laughs> so what I actually did is I went into my DMC stash and I picked out this color to be the new light red. So um, the flowers here, the top parts of these flowers are all in light red. So. I'm going to be using this instead. It's a little more pink uh, than coral, I guess. More a little pinkier than orangey or so. I think that's going to look nice. I'm not upset about it. I was a little frustrated when I realized it happened and felt a little dumb about it, but like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to lose any sleep about it. And here we are, the last Stitch Mania project. For May 15th, this is a project I started on May 15th, 2017. I'm still working on it. It is the Barn Owl Familiar or the Barn Owl from Kalupish by Pinky the Pink at makeitpink.com. And uh, this is what it will look like when it's finished.
a gorgeous project, right? Um, here is what it looked like last year. And here is where we are at now. You guys, I have an entire owl. There are still lots of, there is still lots of backstitch that she needs. And I still have to do the white flowers here, but I was able to finish off, finish off the owl. So I gave her feet. I went back and crossed over all my stitches, did the top of her head, her eyes, her beak, and this little piece of greenery over here. Um, Something I noticed in that model stitch that's on the website is that she used beads um, on the project, but my pattern calls for French knots. I kind of like the beads better, makes it sparkly. So I might try and source um, some of the right color beads to put beads on mine. Uh, this is a series that has four in it. So when she is done, I'm hoping to finish and stitch the other three owls. Um, and my goal eventually is to put them in hoops. That's why I think doing them all on this piece of murky uh, linen will be fine. Um, so I'm so excited about that. I definitely think this one will be finished before next year's mania. But then my dilemma is, do I go ahead and start the next owl or do I wait a whole year to start that one? Because if I don't, if I don't wait, if I start the new owl now and it is not finished before next mania, then that means that this project, like the second, it, the same series won't be on the same day. And I kind of like the idea of like all these owls being stitched on May 15th. So maybe that just means that I need to finish this one and another owl by next year. I mean, realistically it's doable, but you guys know how plans, especially stitchy plans, can just fly with the wind and change. <laughs> so that was my stitch mania. Obviously, since I'm staying home, I had a lot more time to stitch this year, and I think I've made some really great progress. It was really awesome. I say this every year to pull out some of these old projects, and I think that I need to maybe have another mania. I don't know, maybe June Mania, where I pull out these same projects and get to work on them again because it was awesome to get some progress done on it. Um, in the meantime, there's some other things that I have to work on, and uh, but it would be fun to pull these out and get them closer to finishes, especially those old five-year projects. They, they need to be finished. They're not things that I want to throw away, um, but... Yeah, I need, I just, it would be good to get them done. So maybe now is a good time to do that. Uh, maybe I should pick one and, and more whittle away at it, or we'll see. We'll see what I do. I haven't given that too much thought yet. Um, but yeah, I want to say thank you to all of you subscribers, and especially you guys that comment on my videos. And an extra thanks to those of you that were watching my Stitch Mania vlog videos this year. I had a fun time putting those together for you, and I heard from a lot of you that you enjoyed the cat content, so I'm glad that that was a fun thing. And uh, it was nice to have the company of you guys while I was uh, stitching along with my mania. Um, I know I enjoy when other people are able to share those uh um, daily vlogs. So yeah, with that, I'm going to say to those of you that are still doing Stitch Mania, good luck to those of you that are now finished. Congratulations. We did it. Another Mania is finished. How exciting. And can you believe it? I'm already excited about next year. So, um, I have things planned for another video. That means that I will hopefully see you guys soon. And until then, happy stitching. Mm -hmm.